Hey, it's Mike here, and today I wanted to do a short follow-up video on Sean Baker, that guy who's doing an all-meat diet. He went on Joe Rogan, and I did a whole video about that, a longer one, and you can see all of his claims and how high the carbon footprint of his diet is and various things like that. But today, I just wanna look at his blood results because he's made some of them available. Furthermore, I wanna look at some of the amazing mechanisms of denial he uses when looking at these unhealthy levels. And maybe you've seen Happy Healthy Vegan or Foot Soldier's video on this topic, but I wanna cover some points that they didn't cover, specifically starting with cholesterol. We'll look at the specific numbers in a second, but just so you know, he got this after 15 months on a carnivore diet, an all meat diet, and he is talking to Rob Wolf, a paleo author, in all of the audio that you will hear. He's redirected much of the ire of the, the vegan jihadis um, somewhere other than against me, because man, they do not like the guy. And so let's look at his cholesterol. Uh, total cholesterol first. So it's slightly above the, the upper end of the reference range. Surprise, it was high. It was at a total cholesterol of 205, and they gave away his HDL, and they gave away his triglycerides, but they never mention his LDL or bad cholesterol conveniently, which is really important. Thankfully, with a little bit of algebra, we can find the answer because the total cholesterol equation is just LDL plus HDL plus triglycerides divided by five. And since we have all of those other numbers, we can see that his LDL was a whopping 150 milligrams per deciliter. And that's really over twice what it should be if you're looking to Lauren Cordain, who is one of the founders of the Paleo Diet. He had a paper saying that the ideal was between 50 and 70. And mine, for example, is at 50. And you might be saying, hey, but I'm way younger. Well, look at Ryan from Happy Healthy Vegans video after this. He's about the same age and he looks at his numbers. You can compare a vegan his age versus an all meat dieter, interesting stuff. And from this study's graph at about 150, you can see that he is on the worst end of this chart in terms of atherosclerosis. And of course, 50 is way down there at the best end. Okay, now I wanna look at his blood urea nitrogen, which is really a measure of how much protein you're eating. The urea is a byproduct of protein. The blood urea nitrogen was slightly out of range. And of course it's high and he does not seem to see a problem with it and neither does Rob Wolf. Get within the, the CrossFit community, like it, it, seeing people with quote, normal blood urea nitrogen almost never happens. Yeah, all these paleo CrossFitters are pounding down massive amounts of animal protein and it's totally fine to have these ridiculously high levels of blood urea nitrogen. Nope. You can't just say these people are healthy because they do CrossFit. Their diet is putting them at a high risk of heart disease. Just look at Bob Harper, the host of Biggest Loser, according to this article. Quote, he's a fan of CrossFit style workouts and eating clean. They then do a big appeal to futility of, oh, it was just genetics. Everybody can get a heart attack. Just keep eating the way you're eating. But what did Bob Harper have to say about this clean eating, which was essentially a paleo diet, which is again, what Rob Wolf promotes. Quote, the dieting world went back in time to find variations of the caveman diet but I found those high protein plans had too much fat and weren't so great for my heart. So he's actually pointing to the paleo diet as the cause of his heart attack. And in terms of Sean Baker, I'd be very surprised if he did not have issues with kidney stones from all that excess protein. Uh, from the Cleveland Clinic, moving from blood to urine for a second, quote, eating large amounts of animal proteins can cause uric acid to build up in the urine. The uric acid can settle and form a stone by itself or in a combination with calcium. Enough about that, let's move on to testosterone, which was super duper low. Total testosterone was 237. The free testosterone was 5.5. Am I reading that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah they were low. They were low. I repeated that actually again, and they were still, they were a little bit higher, but still low. And this is, a, this is an interesting thing. And I think we see this across the low carb community. He had a total testosterone of 237, which is literally off the charts low. His free testosterone was also really low. And I find it funny how Rob Wolf was like, oh, but you have muscle though. You uh, clearly carry a lot of muscle mass, have some very impressive physical performance. No, he's been an athlete for a long time. This is residual muscle. There's no evidence that he's built any new muscle on this diet. And how could he with the testosterone levels of a 90 year old grandma? Well, he claims to how his testosterone just goes further because his body is so magical. That you become sensitized to, you know, your, your receptors become extremely sensitive. I would argue that perhaps that is a good thing if these uh, organs are not being required to continuously pump out hormone level, you know, hormones, maybe running in a lower background level, but having the same clinical effect might even be a more efficient way to do things. He's deeply in denial. Now tell me, Mr. Baker, if you saw a vegan with these testosterone levels, what would you think? 
Well, it just so happens that according to this study, vegans have higher levels of total testosterone on average than people who eat meat. Here are his testosterone levels and here are the average vegan ones. Obviously he's older than average, but still. Not for one that actually surprised me, and that is his blood sugar levels. He had very high blood sugar levels. Uh, glucose, your fasting glucose was at a 127, which is definitely, it can be on the higher side. Some people in the low carb community can see some dawn phenomena. Which put him in the diabetic blood sugar range for fasting blood glucose. And keep in mind, he's not eating any plants at all, so he's not getting any of those plant carbohydrates, yet his blood sugar is still high, and I love how low carb and keto people are always like, oh, you're not gonna eat any carbs, so your blood sugar is gonna be super low, and then that's gonna make it so you can't even feed cancer. Oh wait, he actually has diabetic levels. Does that mean that he has diabetes? Well, it's not quite as clear cut from the Mayo Clinic. In terms of fasting glucose, quote, if it's 126 milligrams per deciliter or higher on two separate tests, you have diabetes. You have the weakest pancreas, goodbye. So by this standard, if he went and got another test and it was the same, he would clinically have diabetes, it seems. Now let's look to hemoglobin A1C, another measure for diabetes diagnosis. And this is simply how much sugar is attached to the hemoglobin, the blood cells, and it's a measure of how high your blood sugar has been over the past few months. So a more long-term stable measurement. His hemoglobin A1C was 6.3 or on the high end of pre-diabetic, very close to the 6.5 or greater for full-on diabetes. And again, with the denial, it's pretty amazing. He says that magically his red blood cells could be living longer and therefore the hemoglobin A1C is being overestimated. <laughs> what? We know that some people, particularly diabetics, their red blood cells can live even shorter. So they often will underestimate what their true A1C is. And, so, and the opposite may be occurring uh, in this situation where if red blood cells live longer, then it overestimates the hemoglobin A1C. No, what you're worried about with hemoglobin A1C is if your blood sugar has been consistently high in the past and his blood sugar is high right now. So we have every reason to believe that no, it actually just is from high blood sugar. You're totally full of it. This guy's ability to deny things is amazing. I bet if his leg fell off from diabetes or something like that, he'd be like, oh, I'm just transforming into a super lizard man. Don't worry, it'll grow back. We already know that he uses gullet stones to digest his meat. I'm kidding, That's that was a joke from the original video. Go watch it if you haven't. Finally, I wanna talk about vitamins. His vitamin D levels were low, which is pretty straightforward, but I would be very curious to see his vitamin C levels because we get that from plants and he does not eat plants. And so he might be on his way to scurvy. We don't know. We'll see. All right, in the spirit of keeping this video short, that's gonna be it. But definitely let me know down below what you think about this. Do you think he's magically turning into a lizard man? So it's okay, he has super low testosterone and low vitamin D and the high blood sugar and high hemoglobin A1C and the list goes on. Pretty amazing. Yeah, let me know down below what you think and uh, feel free to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.